I think we saw there was a gap in the market. At the time, 80% of the old market pictures sold at Christie's were bought by dealers and then sold on at large profits. And we thought we'd set up a company where we gave retail prices to the owners. Sometimes people are not receiving all the millions that you read about in the newspapers because of taxation and other factors. So there are always people who prefer to sell privately because they don't want their business, if you like to say, displayed in public, which is what happens if you sell at auction. I had my own little gallery. I found dealing alone, mm -hmm. and particularly with no detailed knowledge background, um, rather scary at times, and I really wanted to work with somebody else and somebody whose eye and connoisseurship that I respected. I became pretty disillusioned with the direction that Christie's was going in at the time. It seemed to be that the, the tail, namely the financial side of the business, was beginning to wag the dog, uh, namely the art experts, and finance was coming in front of art. And that wasn't the way that I saw myself wanting to be involved in the world of art. And the appeal of being able to work privately and being more in charge of one's own destiny seemed to be one that uh, I look forward to embracing. After two or three years in the business, Simon and I were seeing a, a trend towards modern, if you like to call it that. Yeah. I mean, i.e. post-old master. It seemed that um, to have somebody of the stature of James joining the company mm -hmm. was an essential move forward, really. How did you find the transition between moving from an auction house to setting up a private dealership? As a dealer you get to choose and what you sell very much reflects your own taste uh, and that's something that, that's very important in establishing your reputation and persona. Being able to decide what to handle, what you would simply walk away from, was something that was very attractive. I've been at Christie's 24 years. I started looking at pictures and I became very interested in, especially Constable at an early age. And in the sale room, about 70% of the pictures you handled were not good pictures. The private dealer tries to really identify the person who's right for that picture and match them both up. You're dealing with one person and you know where he's coming from. Quite often the public assume that the art market simply consists of, of what passes through auction. But in fact, a, a very high proportion of the art that is traded in any year goes through galleries and private dealers. So you're seeing a, a whole raft of, of art that simply doesn't come publicly on the market. It happens because people want to trade privately. You look at the work of art for its quality and you assess it there and then. You're not encompassed by the previous price levels. Over the 25 years, what would you say was the highlight picture to have sold here at the gallery? Or indeed, what was the first picture that sold or you handled here? The first picture we sold was the Correggio of the Head of Christ, which we sold to the Getty Museum. It was a magical work of art. And would be amongst my favourites in the whole 25 years. Probably a Monet River landscape, which we sold on behalf of a private collector. Which was your favourite picture to have handled over the last 25 years? One could go for one of the most expensive pictures, a Cezanne, the portrait of his gardener, Valier, or one could go for a wonderful Picasso drawing of the Japanese dancer, Sado Yako, or perhaps a, a Coro lyrical painting of, of Florence. Uh, there are so many that, to choose from. 
We're not just looking at old masters, or not just looking at impressions, or modern paintings. Through these doors have come great masterpieces from virtually every area of Western art in the last, you know, 500 years or so. What has been the best discovery, or the discovery that you're most proud of? I suppose the Botticelli, which ended up in the National Gallery of Scotland. When I first saw it, I was told by the then owner that it wasn't by Botticelli, it was a copy. It was dirty, yes. I stuck by my guns and took up various Botticelli experts who all agreed. Then we sold it. The Poussin of the Baptist of Christ is another discovery. Brancusi, a, a fresco, uh, which was of uh, white birds on a blue sky, which was in his first exhibition in, in America in 1928, was an exciting piece to discover. very few art fairs 25 years ago, literally four or five in the world. Now there's an art fair every week. You could be exhibiting in a different art fair 52 weeks of the year. We see a lot of our best clients at the art fairs that we exhibit, and it is a chance in this pressure time that we live in for them to come and interact with us and see the pictures that we have and for us to talk with them. Much more important because fewer people come into galleries, it's much easier for them to go to art fairs where they can see a wide variety of pictures. I'm James Roundell, director of uh, Modern Pictures with Dickinson in London, where the, the key work of art is the Delaunay uh, Tory Fell picture, which is the outstanding picture in the fair, and it's not just me saying so, because it's been voted the outstanding picture in the fair. What is your favourite museum in the world, and which exhibitions stand out in your mind as being particularly noteworthy? I think my favourite exhibition is the one I just saw last night, the Charles I ah. exhibition, which is wonderful. Um, I mean, he, he was probably one of the great collectors of all time. I think it's the intimate ones, it's the Fricks, the Wallace collection. Actually, I think the Queen's Gallery put on marvellous exhibitions. I mean, because also for me, I enjoy them because there might be some marvellous works of art as well as or drawings and paintings and so on. Some exhibitions stay in the memory uh, when they challenge your, your knowledge and your perceptions. So I think mm. Matisse Picasso, uh, mm. 10, 15 years ago now, there it set Matisse against Picasso and you had to see who was great or better at any particular moment and I thought that was a fascinating exhibition. What top tips would you give as advice to today's buyers, either new or established? At the end of the day when you're buying pictures, you, fashion can always overcome you. Decide what you like and then try and go into it in depth. But as fashions have changed, there are certain areas that do seem to be underpriced in today's market. And I would point to early Impressionism. Uh, during the last 20 or 30 years, the fashion has moved towards late Impressionism. Very beautiful, beautifully mm -hmm. painted, and invested with real passion. And it seems to me to be underpriced now. What would be your biggest takeaway after now 25 years of doing business, and what would you tell your 25-year-old self? All the mistakes I've made are the things I haven't bought mm -hmm. because I haven't been bold enough at the time. Keep looking and looking and looking. Learn Mandarin. But you know, when I left Christie's 22 years ago, in my head, how long did I think 
one would be a successful dealer for probably five, eight years. And here I am, 22 years on, here Simon and Dave are 25 years on, and we are still at the top of the game.